On this week's political figure episode, we've got the Minnesota political twin of Bernie Sanders, Mr. Paul Wellstone. Paul David Wellstone was born in Washington, D.C. on July 21st, 1944. He was the second son of Ukrainian Jewish immigrants, Leon and Minnie Wexelstein. Leon and Minnie changed their last name to Wellstone because uh, in addition to being incredibly racist, the U.S. used to be incredibly anti-Semitic as well. Paul grew up in Arlington, Virginia and graduated from Yorktown High School in 1962 before going Going on to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, on a wrestling scholarship. He would marry Sheila Eisenwell Stone the summer before his sophomore year of college and would graduate in 1965 with a bachelor's in political science. He would then go on to get his PhD in political science by 1969 from UNC as well. After obtaining his PhD, he moved to Northfield, Minnesota to teach political science at Carleton College. In addition to being an educator at the college for the next 20 years, he also founded the Organization for a Better Rice County, spent an untold amount of hours doing community organization and activism, fighting for affordable housing and public housing and affordable child care and affordable health care and free school lunches and better funded education. Fucker got arrested in 1970 for protesting the Vietnam War and then got arrested again in 1984 for protesting bank foreclosures. The FBI kept a personal file on him and monitored him because, you know, fuck the First Amendment. He walked a picket line with the meat packers, the Hormel plant in 19 1985 to help with their labor dispute. His school fired him for his activism and his students went and held a sit-in and made the school rehire him and give him tenure. Paul was a badass. On a side note, I've been doing this series now in some form or fashion for well over a year and I think it can be argued that Minnesota has provided the country with more underrated, community engaged, selfless freedom fighting, walk the walk, talk the talk, put their money where their mouth is, freedom fighting, grassroots, progressive, true public service public servants than maybe any place else in the country. We have some badass political lineage here that does not get the credit it deserves. Anyway, back to Paul. In addition to his activism, he also got involved with the Minnesota DFL and even ran for Minnesota State Auditor in 1982, but lost to the incumbent, the time future Minnesota Governor Arne Carlson. Even after his defeat, he remained active with the party and would run for Senate in 1990 against Republican incumbent Rudy Boschowitz. Rudy's campaign outspent Paul's by 7 to 1, and he was expected to win in a landslide. Over Paul's grassroots campaign squeaked out a win making Paul the only candidate to beat an incumbent senator nationwide in 1990. Boschwitz tried reclaiming his seat in 1996, outspending Paul by an exponential margin again, and losing again, this time in a landslide. Of course, Paul took his For the People attitude to Washington, D.C. He served on the Committee on Veterans Affairs and successfully advocated for increased spending on veterans' health care. He advocated for Minnesota's long, politically ignored Hmong community. With his wife, he helped advocate for victims of domestic violence and helped pass legislation to to prevent domestic violence and sex trafficking. He built bipartisan support to prevent insurance discrimination against people with mental illness. He was one of only 11 senators to vote against us going to Iraq both under Daddy Bush and Baby Bush. And he did that openly admitting that he believed that vote would cost him his re-election in 2002. He was one of only eight senators to vote against repealing Glass-Steagall, a repeal which in large part facilitated the 2008 housing crisis and financial meltdown. He also wrote the Wellstone Amendment and what would become the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act of 2000. His amendment extended a ban on last minute political and campaign advertisements right before an election to nonprofits and put a hard limit on nonprofit political campaign advertising of $5,000 per individual. Unfortunately, the entire bill would be gutted and overturned less than a decade later by the Supreme Court's ruling on Citizens United in 2010. And now corporations are people and money is speech and fuck the rest of us. But nobody's perfect, and Paul Wellstone also voted some ways that definitely were not great. He voted in favor of various military military actions under the Clinton administration, a lot of them questionable, including ones in Bosnia, Yugoslavia, and Somalia. And most notably, he voted in favor of the Defense of Marriage Act in 1996, which banned federal recognition of same-sex marriages. Surprising for a man who's fought for every disenfranchised community he's ever stumbled across. However, the mark that separates somebody from being a good or bad person, and even more importantly, a good or bad politician, is the ability to learn from your mistakes, recognize them, and correct them. And Paul, the good public servant he was, asked his upset supporters to educate him on the issue, and would later apologize, admitting that he made a mistake voting the way that he did. Unfortunately, on October 25th, just 11 days before the 2002 election, a Beechcraft King Air A100 crashed into the forest just outside of Eveleth Airport, killing Paul, his wife, and one of his three children. And in a sad twist of irony, Paul and his family boarded the plane that would result in their own funerals because they decided that instead of attending a rally 
rally and fundraiser with his colleagues, that they would go pay their respects at the funeral of former steelworker and father of the Minnesota House Representative Tom Rukavina. Sadly, Paul was just 58 years old. Paul had received death threats throughout his senatorial career, including a number immediately before the plane crash. And with no clear reason for the crash, the FBI conducted an intense criminal investigation to see if foul player sabotage was at works in the plane's demise. However, after years of investigation by the FBI and the FAA, the conclusion was reached that the crash was caused by an aerodynamic stall. The results of a pilot who was too old and incompetent to be flying a plane, and who friends and co-workers had repeatedly complained about to his employer and urged him to retire. But sadly, the United States lost one of its most fervent champions, all because one man's hubris wouldn't allow him to acknowledge that he was too old, incompetent, and unskilled to do the job he was tasked with. As if this story needed any more tragic irony. It was a week and a half before the election, Jimmy Carter's former vice president and former U.S. Senator from Minnesota, Walter Mondale, stepped into Paul Wellstone's shoes and tried to finish out his campaign. Unfortunately, the former DFL mayor of St. Paul turned Republican, Norm Coleman, narrowly squeaked out a victory over Mondale with 49.5% of the vote. Arguably a disrespectful conclusion to the untimely end of the life and career of one of America's greatest public servants.